What is up guys, welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna to be going over the best 3D printer settings for the Ender 3 V2 when printing with PLA. I will be going over some tips and tricks that I use myself to get better prints with PLA, as well as my Cura profile for all of the settings that I use in there. I will be showing you what works best for me when I am printing with PLA. It does depend on the brand that you use for each material, so each brand is gonna be a little bit different but I'll be going over the basic settings that I use, and that should be a really good baseline if you're trying to make your own PLA profile. The main goal is to get as little supports as possible, print as smooth as possible, print as fast as possible. You kind of want a nice in-between of all of those things, and that's what I'm gonna try and show you today. With that being said, I will take you into my Cura settings and show you what I have down. Feel free to copy whatever you want. It does work for most PLAs that I've tried, but you might have to make little tweaks here and there if you are using a different brand. All right, so we are in Cura right now with the 3D Benchy, and now it's time to show you my profile. I am going to be going over every single one of the settings, just in case you have changed something uh, in the past and you need to change it back, or if there's something for your machine that needs to be a different way. Um, this should be pretty universal when it comes to at least the Ender machines, but it works best with the Ender 3 V2 because that's what I made it for. So we're going to start out with the layer height. The layer height is 0.2 millimeters. Um, the initial layer height is also 0.2 millimeters. I like to have them the same. I've tried 2 point, or 0.24, um, but it didn't seem to really work out too well. Um, I know many people do that to make it a little bit easier to get it off the bed, but it just hasn't worked for me in the past, so I just stick to the point two. Uh, line width is what it comes stock with, uh, point 0.4 all the way down. The initial layer line width is also 100%. Uh, I believe it does come stock as that as well. The wall thickness is 1.2. And I like to do a three wall line count. All right, so the reason I like to print with three walls instead of two um, is because you can see the infill on a lot of different materials through the plastic, especially when you hold it up to a light. So I like to save that at three. It also helps with the rigidity of your actual print. So if it's a useful print that you don't want to break, this will help the structural integrity with the print. I have the outer wall wipe distance and the outer wall inset set at zero. Uh, I do have optimized wall printing order on right here. Horizontal expansion is also zero. The Z seam alignment is kind of up to you. I really like the sharpest corner option. Uh, it's, it's very good for hiding the seams, uh, I find. I also do smart hiding for the seam corner preference. For the top surface skin layers, I do like to do one. Um, it'll add a little bit of time to your print, but not anything that would be super noticeable. The top and bottom thickness is set to 0.8 millimeters. Top layers and bottom layers, I have it set to four. Um, I believe that is also what it comes with when you load up the PLA profile on Cura. I do use the lines for the top bottom as well as the bottom pattern initial layer. Uh, it seems to work, I've had no issues with it. I use a 0.04 skin overlap and this helps the walls in the infill adhere a little bit better to each other, um, which is obviously what you want. You don't want the infill to just be like hollow inside of there. It won't really work out too well. Uh, the skin removal width, 1.2, uh, all the way down until the maximum skin angle for expansion, and that is set to 90. The infill density kind of depends on what you're printing with. Um, I've used anywhere from like 8% all the way up to about 80. 80% is what I use for my shift knobs. Uh, just to give it like a nice little weight as well as making sure it's quite uh, strong. The infill line distance is set to eight millimeters and this is fine for me. Um, the infill pattern also uh, kind of depends on what you're making. I like the grid, I like triangles. So cubic subdivision does help if you are trying to get strength, but also save on material. It's one of my go-tos, especially for PLA. It doesn't work too well with some other materials such as PETG, um, or even TPU, but PLA, it's, it's pretty easy to print with. My infill line multiplier is just set to one. Overlap percentage is set to 30. I think I might have edited this one. I don't quite remember, but that's what I have it set to and it works well. Uh, infill overlap is 0.12 millimeters and the an infill layer thickness is 0.2. The PLA that I use, uh, 205 degrees Celsius works great for me. I do have one material that requires around 210 Celsius and it is still PLA, 
um, but that's just kind of varies on the brand. So if you have a different brand, kind of read uh, what it says on the film. It should have a set number uh, on there or something like at least ballpark range around there. Um, and I would definitely go with something closer to that if 205 is a little bit over it. Go ahead and drop it down to 200 or something that is better for the filament that you're using the build plate temperature. So I have a glass bed still. Um, I am wanting to get a PEI sheet, but for right now, the glass bed is doing just fine. But PLA has been sticking almost too well to it sometimes. I'll have to throw it in the freezer for like 30 minutes to an hour and it'll still be really hard to get off. So I went ahead and lowered the build plate temperature to 40 degrees Celsius instead of the stock 60 degrees. Um, this helps it release a lot better and I haven't had any issues with it coming off while it's printing. The flow I have set is just at 100%. Print speed. Now this is very important. A lot of people like to ramp up the speed to get prints done quicker and you can do that, but you are going to sacrifice the quality of the print. So I like to go a nice in between for the Ender 3 V2. Uh, 75 is a little bit on the higher side, but I found with this profile it works just fine. The infill speed is 75. Uh, the wall speed is 37.5. And you can change the outer wall speed um, to a little bit lower if you want a nicer finish on the outside, but I find 37.5 works just fine. The travel speed, a lot of people set this to around 100 to 150. I just keep it at 150 because it prints a little bit faster and I haven't had any issues with it. All right, so the initial layer speed, you do not want to go way too high on this because it has to adhere on the first layer. Um, obviously, you don't want to go like 70, 75. That would not stick at all um, and you'd just be out a whole print. So I set mine to 20 and it's been working fine. You can go a little bit lower or a little bit higher, but 20 is a nice in between for me. Um, the number of slower layers. So this is two and that's all you really need the first and second layer after those adhere you're pretty much set to start printing faster um, if you're having troubles with it sticking i would recommend going like three maybe but two should work for most printers i have enable acceleration control as well as enable jerk control off um, didn't really find a need for them all right so now we're moving on to travel and enable retraction obviously you need retraction especially when you're printing with an ender style with the bowden um retract that layer change this does help i have this ticked on all the time with every single material that i use retraction distance now this will vary between different machines if you have a direct drive extruder this will be closer to one to three uh, millimeters, but for a Bowden style, especially on the Ender 3, Ender 3 V2, uh, I think the Ender 3 Pro as well, uh, 6.5 or around there would be ideal. Um, that should be what it comes with when you first add your printer. Uh, if you have an Ender 3 V2, it should be about 6.5, um, but I found that works perfectly. I have bumped it up to 7 when I'm working with a little bit stringier filaments, but around there, you might want to tweak it a little bit. They do have a, an extension. If you want to see a video on the extension um, that you can use to do a retraction tower, it'll kind of like show you exactly what retraction distance you will need. I did that with my TPU because that was a little bit harder to dial in. Retraction speed. Now, depending on the material, um, you'll want to change this just a little bit, but 45 works well for me and it'll help speed up the print a little bit. If it's pulling it back really slow, a bunch of retractions over time will add up and add a couple extra minutes uh, to your print. Combing mode. Now this is important. So basically when the nozzle is going around the uh, print, it'll avoid going out of the actual print to avoid some stringing. Um, I do not in skin and that works great for me. I would highly recommend turning that on. Avoid printed parts when traveling. I have this checked on. Uh, avoid supports while traveling, also on. Travel avoid distance. Now I think this is stock and it is set to 0.625. I have not had an issue with that. Cooling, now with PLA, you want your fans to be at 100% most of the time. Obviously on the first layer, you do not want it to be cooling. You need, to, need it to adhere really well. Um, but for the rest of the print, to get the best overhangs, I would highly recommend turning them all the way up. It will be a little bit louder than say if you turn them down to 50 just because fan noise, 
um, especially with the stock Ender fans, they're really loud. Um, I do have Noctua fans coming in to do a silent mod. I will have a video up on that as well. If you guys are interested in making your Ender 3 or Ender 3 V2 silent, uh, it is very nice to not hear the fans running constantly all the time. The regular fan speed at height is 0.6. Regular fan speed at layer is four. I've seen some people turn this to three, but four works for me. Minimum layer time is 10 seconds. The minimum layer time is very important. So basically when the nozzle is going around, it'll make it stay there. If it is done with the layer, it'll make it stay there for at least 10 seconds. So it ensures that the other part that you just printed is already cooled by the time it starts laying another layer. Um, if this wasn't on and you're printing a, like a point or something, um, it very well just might melt and melt and melt. And then you'll just kind of get like a smushed point, which wouldn't turn out too well. The minimum speed is 10 millimeters a second. Supports, depending on the print, you will or will not want supports. Um, it varies print to print, but I'll show you my support settings anyway. So for my support structure, it's set to normal, support placement everywhere. So you can also do touching build plate if you are making like a duct of some sort and you don't want to try and get a bunch of infill out of the actual duct. Um, you can just do it to where it'll only support it where it's touching the build plate. Um, it is very useful in certain circumstances, but I usually use everywhere. The support overhang angle, I usually use 55. I find that works just fine. The support pattern. Now this is zigzag. You can do any of these. Um, I just use zigzag because it's quick and it's reliable. Support density. You do not need your support to be super dense um, or else you're just gonna be wasting a lot of material on the stuff that you're gonna be pulling off and throwing away already. Um, so I have mine set to 20%. I have put it down to 10% at times if I'm not wanting to waste a bunch of material, especially if it's a more expensive material. Uh, but most of the time I print with 20% density. Just like all of my other layer thicknesses, it is set to 0.2, uh, no reason to really change it. I have enable support interface, enable support roof, and enable support floor on. Uh, I recommend having all of these on. It just helps you uh, take it off easier. Build plate adhesion. Now for PLA, I don't use it. I know a lot of people use build plate adhesion. Um, if I do, I only use the skirt option. Um, this will make it so before it prints the actual model, it'll go around it a couple times. You can change the amount of layers. A lot of people use this if they do not have a BL or a CR touch. Um, this will ensure that your distance from the nozzle to the bed is correct before it starts printing. And if you need to make any last minute adjustments, you can do that while it's just printing the skirt. Um, it is helpful in certain circumstances, but since I have already installed a CR touch, uh, I have it off but I would recommend if you do not to set it to two or three skirt line counts. Um, there's also different options like brim, raft, and then none. Um, I usually run with none for PLA uh, and I have a CR touch. That is pretty much it. So we're gonna go ahead and slice it, see how long it'll take, how many grams. This print is supposed to take two hours and 34 minutes. So it's not the fastest profile, but it is what I found best. If you want it an in between, uh, between super fast, as well as good quality, you will wait a little bit longer than some other profiles I've seen, but this does work very well if you're wanting some high quality prints that you can, you can get done in a decent amount of time. That pretty much wraps it up for the Cura side of things. Now I'm gonna jump into some other things that are pretty helpful when you're trying to print. If you are having trouble with bed adhesion, you will want to pick up some hairspray. It does not have to be anything good. I picked this up for about $2.50 at Walmart, just the cheapest one you can find. It works really well. Most 3D printers, when you buy them, will come with these little clippers, but if they don't, you need to pick some up. They are very useful when you're trying to snip off and clean up your prints. Next up, I would highly recommend printing a scraper so you don't scratch your bed with a metal one. Over time, these will degrade and it will chip up, but you can always print another one. Next up, we have an X-Acto knife or a utility knife of any kind. This will help you clean up your prints. One thing that is a must is rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol. Now I use this to wipe down the bed before I start the print. The oils from your fingers can actually make the print not stick and it'll result in a failed print. I hope you guys like this tutorial and if you guys have any other tutorials you would like to see, let me know in the comment section. I will do my best to reply to everybody. 
If you're having troubles with any of the things I talked about, let me know in the comments. I will try my best to help you and I'm sure there's a lot of other people in the comments that would be happy to help you as well.